Greetings, you guys. I hope that you have all recovered from my last video. <laughs> I've somewhat recovered from my last video. Jesus is my rock. That's how I roll. Um, thank you for uh, joining me on another episode of Cal Preach, guys. Um, so, yeah, my last video, I was extremely, extremely emotional. And, you know, I'm grateful in many ways because I feel like for me to be able to have the capacity to be honest on that level with you guys is something that brings me a lot of joy uh, and a lot of um, gratitude because I promised myself when I started this channel that I was going to do my darndest to just lay it out for you guys and let you know really truly what's happening what's going on in my life to the best of my ability and what's happening in my heart whether it's pretty or whether it's messy um and so um yeah i'm just i'm just grateful that you guys uh the comments always just blow me away and i felt so loved and so supported and i i don't know how to thank you enough I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. So today we're going to talk about the fact that I feel like I'm a fugitive. <laughs> I feel like I'm a fugitive. Like I'm constantly running away from God. And, um, uh, you know, I think that being a fugitive is not necessarily a bad thing. And I think that lots of people who walk with Jesus, walk with the Lord, um, if they're being honest, will admit that there are many days and many moments and many seasons where they feel like they're running. Um, and whatever, we have our own agenda, we're pushing our own agenda on God, we're um, taking the control back. And um, I just love that he captures me. I'm a fugitive that's captured daily. I should be a t-shirt or something like that. I'm, I'll figure it out, but yeah, like a fugitive that's just captured on a daily basis by Jesus, you know? He's like, okay, girl, you're running and I'm gonna rein you back in. And I think uh, part of it is just not trusting that God is going to do what the Bible says he's gonna do, which is fulfill his promises um, and, you know, be a good father and love us and tend to our needs and, um, yeah, I just, you know, I wrote down here on one of my holy notes, we bring about what we pray about. And I've just been praying for the Lord to help me to not be such a fugitive, to not run away so much, and to um, really submit more, more and more and more and more. Really, it is about the submission in, in the walk with the Lord, isn't it? It's really about having the willingness to submit to our Creator and to be able to say, you're in charge, you're the boss, you are my father, I am your daughter, I am your son, and I am going to um, not just close my eyes and, you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I guess, like, I'm not going to just, just, not trust you. I'm going to trust you. I am going to trust you. No matter what it takes, no matter how painful it is, no matter how much it hurts to fall on my face and surrender, I'm going to do my, my very, very best. And it's not, it, it's like messy. You know what I mean? And that's okay. I, I think that a lot of people think that, oh, a Christian is, you know, in a box and we're all just tied up so perfectly in a neat little box and we're, you know, prim and proper and religious. And we're not religious, at least I'm not religious, and I'm not prim and proper. I'm an absolute mess in many ways, but it's a beautiful mess, and I'm okay with that. Um, and I feel like Jesus is, you know, Jesus was our stumbling savior. It wasn't pretty. He, you know, was bleeding, and he was torn up all over his back, and he had a spear, you know, in his... I guess it was his abdomen area where they stuck him with the spear after he had already died, right? And then, um, you know, he had a crown of thorns and he was bleeding down his face and nails in his hands and nails in his feet and, you know, being asphyxiated. Like that, that's not pretty. There's nothing pretty about 
our Lord and what he did. It's the most beautiful, unspeakable, gorgeous act of love, the most profound act of love, the most beautiful love story ever told that, that God's son would come down in the flesh and, and literally die for us. Um, that's absolutely takes my breath away. Um, but I'm just, uh, I'm noticing that, you know, it is a mess. It is a little bit of a mess and that's, that's okay. It is a little bit of a mess, my walk with God. And, um, I don't think I could really call myself a Christian if it were all in place and it were all just clean. That's, I just think, I keep thinking of prim and proper, you know, and, um, that's just not my story, not my story with my walk with God. Um, so, um, I also noticed that I'm, <laughs> okay, my holy notes are funny today. I'm constantly interrupting God. And what I mean by that is that, you know, it's rude to interrupt our friends, right? It's rude when we're like not letting our friends finish their sentences and stuff. And, um, and I notice that I interrupt God's flow. I interrupt the Holy Spirit all the time out of fear. It's just out of fear. I'm just not <sighs> trusting. It just comes down to trust, doesn't it? I'm, I'm not trusting that God's going to do it, that God's going to pull through, that God's going to come through for me. And I'm not really sure why that is, but it says in the Bible to build our house on the rock and not on the sand because then when the storm comes, you know, our house won't get washed away. And I noticed that when the storm comes in my life, half my house is washed away. <laughs> so I know I'm not completely on the rock, um, but I'm just praying about that. I'm praying about that. I'm asking God to help me make sure that, that my entire house is on the rock. I feel like my hair is all weird. Sorry, I'm going to stop touching my hair. Okay. Um, and stop pushing my own plans and just start working on not interrupting God. You know, I, I work on not interrupting people. So why wouldn't I work on not interrupting our Lord and Savior? Because he's qualified, guys. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's, he's got his job down. I don't think we need to help him with his job. I don't think he needs any help. Um... And I realized that, you know, my last video was really super emotional and I wrote down here that I feel like I'm a prisoner of war coming home and I hope that doesn't offend anybody because obviously I'm not a war veteran. Obviously I know that I'm not a war, war, war veteran and that there are war veterans and I thank you honestly from the bottom of my heart for your service. But I do feel because of my son's cancer diagnosis and because of my um, loss that I am feeling a little bit like I've I'm a prisoner that's come home, a war prisoner that's come home. And uh, I still have the, the PTSD and I'm still a little gun shy and I'm still a little fragile. And that's why I always say life is fragile, handle with prayer because, you know, right now I just need so much prayer and that's okay. I need to be inundated with prayer. I need to be flooded with prayer, continuous unceasing prayer. Um, it's, it's part of the season that I'm in and let's hope in some ways that that season persists because I, I want to be in unceasing prayer all the time. Um, yeah, that's kind of, uh, a wonderful place to be constantly in prayer. And I'm turning my worries into prayers. So if I catch myself obsessively worrying about something, I just say, whether it's something you know, totally frivolous, like the washing machine is broken or whatever, you know, it's like, oh, the washing machine's broken. Lord, the washing machine is broken. What do I do? Father, help me. Instead of just the washing machine is broken. The washing machine is broken. Who do I call? What do I do? I, I bring the Lord into it. I invite, I'm inviting Jesus into my worry and into my obsessive thoughts, if that makes any sense, which really is awesome. Um, so you've heard me say this, religion says do, and Jesus says done. And so again, I don't want to offend anybody who considers themselves to be a religious person. That's, um, you know, that's fine. I just don't 
see myself as a religious person and um, I see myself as a person who walks in, in faith with Jesus Christ and part of um, but part of my own walk with Christ I find is a bit religious and I'm working on that the way I see religion is that I feel like there's a lot of expectations on a religious person like you got to do it this way it's got to be done that way you know God's watching you you know <laughs> and so that's why I, I just sort of shy away from the word religious because I I don't want my faith to look like that because the whole cornerstone of the Christian faith is the fact that we are set free is the fact that Jesus died for our sins and we're forgiven is the fact that there's nothing we can do to add to our salvation and that it's his you know righteousness it's not my righteousness and I forget that all the time I forget it all the time so in a sense I am being hypocritical because my walk is a little religious because I'm constantly thinking I've got to do this you know I want to please God I want and it's a it's it's a it's a huge revelation to realize that really all we have to do is love Jesus that's really all we have to do is just love our Lord and Savior all right, I'm going to try and wrap this up. But I do have some more holy notes here. Um, um, yes, yeah, so I just don't want like a fear-based faith. I just, I don't want a fear-based faith. Um, so, um, so yeah, it's like a faith without the ifs, right? That's what my holy notes say. Like the one thing God wants from us is a faith without all the ifs. Like I'll love you and follow you if you save my husband, if you heal my child if you get me to this place in my career or I think God really desires for us to have a faith that's not if filled <laughs> so um, I'm trying I'm working on not having an if filled faith um, and then um, yeah because a real relationship we can't have all these ifs you know for a true relationship because what's on the other side of the if it's this it's the god that we're actually serving that's that's the real god we're serving if 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 we're having an if filled faith the other side of those ifs of the if you do this if you did it is the god that we're actually serving so we need to ask ourselves what are all these ifs about and why am i so dependent on these ifs and um what if those things don't get fulfilled and don't get um whatever corrected in our lives does that mean we walk away from God by no means right so I just want to ask myself okay all of these ifs what are they and um and who's that God I'm worshiping who was who's the if God I'm worshiping <laughs> am I making sense to you today I hope so um so Jesus died for me I can die for him because I have obsessive thoughts about death and I love that. I read that Jesus died for me. I can die for Jesus. I can die for Jesus. Like if I, if I have all these fears about death, you know, everybody I love has to die. I have to die. You have to die. And so what is this fear around death? It's really kind of silly. And if Jesus died for me the way he died, I can certainly die for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, Okay, so the only way is to truly understand um, that Jesus took our wrath and he took what we deserved and that we can stand before, before him when we die in utter gratitude. So on that day when I do die, um, it, just, it just means that, you know, I'm going to stand before him and I am going to, um, sorry, my holy notes are kind of all over the place, but I'm going to stand before him and he's not going to say, well, what did you do for me? I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I think Jesus is going to say, how did you love me? How did you love me? Not what did you do for me? That really struck me. And what also struck me is that I read in the Bible that perfect love casts out fear. And you know how you read something and you just kind of read over it. And then you read it again, like a year or two later. And you're like, oh, perfect love casts out fear and I thought about that and I was like well how how does perfect love cast out fear I have to know with every fiber of my soul that the one who created the universe the one who created all things loves me that's the only way I will be able to cast out fear is if I believe that his perfect love 
can cast it out. His per excuse me, his perfect love. But that's where I struggle because I don't believe that I'm perfectly loved, even though I know it intellectually, I don't know it here. So I need to work on believing that I'm perfectly loved so that I will be out of fear because perfect love casts out fear. Okay, almost in here. Um, um, but I overinvest, this is good. I overinvest in things that are not of God and that's why I'm still in fear. I'm overinvesting in things that are not of the Lord. And if I were investing more time and more energy um, into just loving Jesus, just simply loving him, just simply adoring him and just giving him praise and worship, then um, I wouldn't be in such fear because perfect love casts out fear. Oh my gosh, it just makes too much sense. You know what I mean? It just makes too much sense. Um, I need to existentially love God. I need to be amazed by God's love. Every day I need to be amazed by his love. And um, what are my other holy notes here? Um, so it's a, I'm wild and messy as a Christian and, <clears throat> and Jesus was a little wild and messy. Um, and I think that that's kind of the definition of a true relationship with God. It's gonna be wild and it's gonna be a little messy and that I don't think God would want it any other way. I don't think he wants a prim and proper relationship with us guys. I think he wants a wild and messy relationship with us. And praise God for that, because that means he just wants us. He just wants authentically you. He just wants you to come to him with all your warts and all my baggage and all my pain and all of my heartache and all of my quirkiness and all of my um, abstractness and uniqueness. He wants that, guys. He wants you to bring that to the throne. He wants you to bring that to the table of worship. So bring you. Everybody else is taken, right? Everybody else is taken. I saw that t-shirt once. Everybody else is taken, so just be you. Anyways, peace of Christ. I love you guys. Thank you again for being there for me. God bless you. Oh, Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Hey, you guys, if this video blessed you in any way, I pray that you will subscribe. And I also pray that you'll press that little button next to the subscribe because that is an alert button and it will give you a notification every single time there's a brand new Cal Preach. And of course, share because sharing is caring and you just never know who's going to find the peace of Christ. Amen.